right, I'm going to take off my face mask so that I can talk with you. But we're going to make CP keychains today. We're going to make the molds so that we can pour the molds and make the keychains. So the keychains are going to look something like this when we're all finished. Uh, this one hasn't been uh, uh, drilled or sanded just yet, but it's a six off mold that we're making. And that means that we're going to make six, a total of six uh, keychains from this mold. So we're going to start with making our drag mold from our drag pattern and our coat mold from our coat pattern. But first we're going to need to mix up a batch of chemically bonded sand mixture. So we're going to take sand from our sand container here and fill it up full. It doesn't have to be exact. And that's uh, where we're going to mix in our kitchen mixer. I'm going to turn that on low speed. Then I'm going to grab sodium silicate from our sodium silicate dispenser here and fill up my little measuring cup here with approximately a full thimble full. It's a thick chemical. It's not harmful at all. In fact, it's used in Sodium silicate is used in um, many different food preparation operations. It's used to coat eggs. It's used as a binder for cardboard in food packaging because it is generally considered safe. And we're going to do about one and a half of these little cupfuls of the sodium silicate for a complete batch of sand mixture and I'm going to distribute that around the dry sand and then increase the speed and I'm going to mix for 90 seconds okay after 90 seconds I'm going to take a spatula and take the wet ingredient the sodium silicate and mix it into the main batch of sand because some of it has pushed to the outside of the bowl. So we we'll want to distribute that throughout the sand mixture. And I'm going to go for another 60 seconds. Okay, so we finished mixing up the sand. I'm going to clean off the impeller. I'm going to transfer this sodium silicate sand into this covered plastic container. And that's so that the Carbon dioxide, which is used to react the cold box chemically bonded um, sand sodium silicate binder. And so we don't want the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere to uh, cure this, the binder uh, prematurely. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit of talcum powder and dust each of the mold uh, patterns lightly before adding sand and when I add sand I'm going to go ahead and take it and spread it around the mold and you'll feel that it will compact as you put pressure on it and we're going to compact it into the features in the pattern the CPs uh, we need to have sand packed all around those features to make a good mold so I'm going to scrape it flush with the top of the pattern. So this has a built-in flask for containing the sand around the pattern. And I will strike that with this straight edge and make sure that it's nice and compacted and smooth, reasonably smooth set that aside. Now I'm going to take and add sand to the coat pattern. Now there's a sprue former in the middle of the coat pattern you'll notice and that's going to be for the forming of the sprue which is how we're going to pour metal into the mold. So we'll take that out in a moment. So we form the coat pattern similarly to the drag pattern and when we're ready, we strike it. 
and this sand can go back in if it hasn't been on the table for too long. The rest of the, uh, the sand has been exposed to the air and the CO2 and it starts to harden and we can't use that anymore. So now I am ready to use the CO2 gas to catalyze the sodium silicate to harden the binder. So I'm going to take the gassing ring and the CO2 dispenser here and gas for three seconds, 1001, 1002, 1003, and the coat mold similarly. 1001, 1002, 1003. And now I'm ready to take a little plate. demold the cope and drag patterns and they should come off fairly easily and if they don't we'll give them a little assistance okay so I've demolded and I'm going to press down on that center sprue forming tool and remove the cope pattern and then I'm going to carefully remove the sprue forming little plastic piece which was 3D printed to the exact size needed and if it doesn't remove right away it's okay we can just clear some of the sand that may be holding it in place and then maybe rotate it a little and then it will pop out the bottom and we'll put that back in the coat pattern and we're gonna take and microwave each of our patterns with the smooth side down on the glass plate while it's in the microwave. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in the microwave and put it on one minute. Okay, we're ready to strip our drag mold similarly. And if it's a little stubborn, I can feel it coming out. So I'm just going to run my nail around the outer edge of the pattern to make sure that there's nothing catching to hold it in and try again. And we get it out. You want to be careful with it, but sometimes it's a little stubborn but we've got it out successfully. And so we have our drag mold. I'm gonna put that in the microwave similarly for one minute. And remove our coat mold. And the one minute button for that. Okay, so we wanna make sure that our drag and coat molds mate uh, with the two surfaces flat against each other and so I just I fit them up stack them up and and look along to see if I can see any large gaps between here and if I don't see any large gaps that means that the mold stayed fairly flat and these surfaces are going to be fairly parallel and that's important because when we pour metal in there metal is going to be under some pressure and it will tend to uh, it'll tend to squeeze out along the mold line if we're not careful. This one looks pretty good. So I'm gonna let this one cool the rest of the way to room temperature um, face down. And that way, as they cool, they remain flat. Okay, for safety in the lab, we're going to spray isopropyl alcohol and wipe down all of the surfaces that we came into contact with. And when we're being safe, we'll 
help ensure that we can keep the lab open and keep ourselves going and running.